Are you ready for the stash busting rainbow blanket of your dreams? Well, I've designed this melting marl blanket using fingering weight yarn all held together. So all your leftover sock yarn and shawl yarn can be thrown together into this big marled blanket and it is really big okay so this size and the pattern i designed for like a bedspread or a huge couch blanket but there's notes in the pattern on how to customize the size and in this video we're going to learn how to customize the size and how to put colors together for this stash busty marled scrappy blanket and take a look at a lot of beautiful yarn options so i used fingering weight yarn held double for this project which means I used about a US 8 five millimeter needle. So the gauge of the blanket is like a DK weight gauge, but by holding two strands of fingering weight together, like these beautiful warm yellows or this sherbety yellow sunshiny fantasy, you can mix those two strands of fingering weight together to get a DK weight gauge. But there are moments where I couldn't resist putting a little bit of mohair fluff so we're going to take a look at some mohair options and how to melt and blend those mohairs with your fingering weight wools as well. So the size of this blanket is really large and I, I used mostly scraps for this blanket and by scraps I mean wound balls of yarn. So we're going to, you know, um, we're going to reclassify what scraps are. So as soon as you wind a skein into a ball, it's technically a leftover. Are you with me? Is that okay? Can we do that? Yeah, as soon as you wind a skein into a ball, even if it's 100 grams, that's fair game for leftover knitting, okay? Just, just go with me here. So it's great for all these single skeins and the single balls that you wind up. So even these big ones, I used a lot of yarns that looked like this, speckles and solids and multicolors. So you can really mix different fibers and yarn styles together. I used a lot of solids, variegated, speckles, basically any type of yarn I threw into this blanket. And I'm gonna show you a picture right here of all the yarns in my stash that I worked with. And you can see that I arranged them from light to dark in a rainbow color palette. So I started with those creamy neutrals and faded into the pinks and then red, orange, yellow, blue, green, indigo, violet, and ended with a shadowy black abyss for the edge of the blanket. So here's all those colors that you just saw in that photo going from the light into the pink and those warm colors. So when I grab yarns from my stash, I organize them by color family first. And then when I organized the color families, I arranged each color family from light to dark. So first I organized my yarns by color, getting light into the saturated colors, ending with the dark. That's where I knew I wanted my blanket to go. And then section by section, I went light to dark in those color families. So you can see this pink moment going from that pastel pink into the saturated power pink tones and that orange starting really light and bright and going into those moody, murky, rusty tones. So it was really fun to subdivide the colors in this blanket and really use any yarn amount. So whether it was a big ball like this or a tiny little yarn nugget like this, I just said, yes, don't stress threw it in there, and when you run out of yarn, that's your color opportunity to add another color. And the rows are pretty long, but uh, you don't even have to worry about finishing a row before changing your color. Because of the marled nature of knitting, holding two strands, mixing them together, you can just change yarn at any time. And I promise you won't notice, okay? Because the colors melt so nicely when you have those light to dark sequences. So in this melting marl blanket, one thing I like to do as I'm knitting is to change some textures and elements so you don't get bored. It's a big project, but I made three stitch pattern sections. So you can take a close look at this chevron section in garter stitch, and then some knit pearl ridges in this more blocky increase wavy pattern. And after that are some beautiful waves, stockinette with garter stitch ridges. So garter chevrons, some blocky waves, and some smooth garter ridge eyelet waves. So all those patterns just uh, continue throughout the whole blanket. So you do a chunk of each pattern and then repeat. And if there's one pattern you really, really like knitting, you could knit a longer section of that garter stitch chevron motif if you like. So feel free to customize the length of the rows and the length of the whole blanket can be easily customized 
as you cast on, you could just bind off early if you want. So the width of the blanket is a big couch. So here's a photo of it on my couch in my studio and it covers up the whole thing. It is really wide, super cozy. It's great for knitting and bundling up as you're knitting on your project, this big cozy lap blanket. So if you want to make this blanket a little bit more narrow, you can totally do that. And the magic number is 24, okay? So I give the cast on for the bottom of the blanket, but if you want like a baby blanket or just a couple motifs more narrow, each motif, this chevron motif right here, you see these eyelets in the pattern in the blanket? Each of these is 24 stitches. So if you just take away stitches in multiples of 24, and that's what you're gonna do when you cast on. So cast on the recommended number if you want this big, beautiful blanket, but if you want it more small for like a single bed or just a little decorative lap blanket, multiples of 24. So subtract 24 stitches from your little I-cord cast on or subtract 48 or take away 96 stitches for a more narrow blanket. And that's gonna get you a smaller size. And here you might even want like a little baby blanket or a little dog blanket. So this is with, I think, three, one, two, three, three or four. I think this is four motifs wide. So you can just cast on a multiple of uh, 24 plus those I-cord edges. But I would take the full final stitch count that you see in the pattern and then start taking away 24, 24, 24 from that to get a custom width. But I totally recommend doing that big couch blanket size because it eats up so much yarn and it's just one of those pieces that you're gonna have forever and when you use all your favorite colors it's just gonna match every single color in your house so when in doubt more is more less is a bore use all those colors and let's take a look at some yarns and see what kind of color combos and color layouts we can do for our blanket let's take a look at some color planning for the blanket I have some single skeins and a pile of leftovers to look at some color ideas. But for my blanket, I knew that I wanted a smooth transition from light all the way to dark. So I didn't go really quickly through my colors. Do you see how in some of my sections, like this is one section right here, those knit pearl ridges, that's really just a few colors of yarn. And the previous section, this garter stitch chevron section, from here to here. I used about five different shades or so, cream to gray, but I didn't go creams, yellows, greens, and blues all in the same section. So that's something for you that you might want to think about and say, do I want it really slow and steady like Steven's blanket? These yellows, just a whole section that's yellow. And then a whole section that's mohair with some yellows and a few greens. So they move quite slowly so you can decide to have that smooth melt, or here's a little sample where the colors change quite quickly. So we have garter, the knit pearl ridges, the waves, and garter. There's four sections in the pattern in this little swatch, and it moves through all the colors quickly in four sections. So if you're a bit more, um, I don't know, antsy, or if you get distracted and you want to change colors really quickly, then I would go with this route. And don't wait too long. You don't have to knit a few sections with just neutral. Do a little neutral, a little pink, that's enough. Into your orangey red. Okay, done with that. Move quickly into your next colors, and then you could repeat the cycle. You could go light to dark, and then light to dark again throughout the sections. Or a really beautiful thing, I could imagine this going light to dark over three or four sections and then start reversing dark to light. And you could have this beautiful movement, light to dark to here, and then you could do dark to light for the rest of your blanket. And then light to dark, dark to light. So you don't have to do exactly what I do for how I arrange the colors. It's up to you and listen to how you're feeling. Are you getting bored of colors? then change them quickly. Or if you're really enjoying a color palette, then stretch it out like I did for this long neutral section right there. So let's look at some single skeins. I have this chain fiber dashing sassy, and this is a yarn that I used a lot in this blanket because it's so soft and the colors come in all kinds of colors, like solid, this yellow, yellow color. And this is the Flaminglet. Flaminglet color, 
It's like a little piglet and a flamingo mashed together in one beautiful yarn. And this one is one of my favorites, that Sunset Dreams. That could be so pretty, blended with a purple. And then maybe you could take it into that little cream and green. So this one's called Botanic with the green speckles, balsam, B-A-L-S-A-M, balsam, this beautiful purple. So these single skeins are really great for mixing up with your leftovers. So if you have some of these beautiful hand dyed, oh, this color, this is so beautiful, called Taiga, T-A-I-G-A. -A. This type of color really blends so well with others. You could mix it with browns, or you could mix it and pull out that green tone, or even with pinky purples. Oh, even let's make a little color transition. I think this little light to dark moment would be really pretty. Maybe throwing in a little extra green. I think that could be a beautiful section, transitioning from your greens to purples. So you'll notice in my blanket, there's uh, some solid moments, some solid yarns. So in these sections, this orange section was all solid yarns from here to here. But then later, look at these more busy moments. These were these multicolored yarns, very similar to this. And when you have these multicolor variegated and speckled yarns, these are perfect blenders. So get a couple of those from your stash or collect a couple new skeins and use them to help blend your scrap yarns together. So I've got some scrappy stash bits here. And look at that. I think you could make a really beautiful bridge color. You have this color be a bridge between your scrappy leftovers and it helps them melt and blend together better. So I just love that. Just with one skein, it can really help unite different color stories. So when you have your leftover colors, I use all kinds of yarn amounts and don't worry about the twist of your yarn, okay? So you have single ply, plied sock yarn, a little bit of mohair or alpaca, some fluffy fibers. I added some fluffy textures in this blanket. So cloudy and it helped to blend the colors as well. So when you're finding your leftover colors, start to put them into color families like this, this pink purple and then put them from light to dark, whatever that means to you. If it helps, you could take a black and white photo of your yarns, and that can help show you what's the lightest and what's the darkest. So lay your yarns out, take a photo of them, and put a black and white filter on them, and then you'll see the color value from light to dark. And you might go, oh, maybe this one could go there instead. And that can help blend your colors together. So that's what I did when I'm planning the colors, is arrange them from light to dark in little color families. And if you feel like there's an abrupt change or something out of place like this, you could take it out and replace it with something a little more subtle or a little more close in color value to its neighbors or embrace the shock, okay? It's your blanket, do whatever you want. I love that color shock, that color pop, like this bright pink that happened in between the pastel and the rusty colors, those are the moments where your palette can really come to life. The same here with that limey green and yellow, it really jumps out from those murky, moody, earthy, rustic tones. So have fun with your stash. Don't worry about the fibers or yarn weights too much. Uh, mostly fingering weight held double. But if you have some lace weight, some uh, lace weight mohair or lace weight alpaca, or a silk would be lovely. I held two strands of lace weight together with one strand of fingering weight. So you get that nice thickness and that beautiful dense, marled squishiness in your fabric. One strand fingering weight plus two strands of lace weight or one strand of fingering weight plus another strand of fingering weight. And if you, at any time you feel like it's too thick or too thin, you could use those lace weight yarns. Like if you really want it just a little more thick and fluffy, you could do two fingering weights with just one lace weight. If you just want a little bit of that subtle fluff. Cause lace weight, I don't even think of as a yarn weight. It's so thin, it's, it's fine. You could add a strand of lace weight at any time to any of your colors to help blend them and transition your colors along the way. But there's the melting marl blanket from light to dark with these little moments, light to dark, light to dark. And I ended with those deep saturated 
blues and purples and black. So moody to finish. So have fun, collect some new skeins, and uh, customize that color series to suit your stash. Well, I hope you have fun with that Melting Morrow Blanket, and you can share your progress with hashtag Melting Morrow Blanket on Instagram, post them on Ravelry, and just remember that my patterns are a guideline, so if you like one of those stitch patterns more, then knit it more. And you wanna change the size, then just bind off early, or knit a longer blanket. So use up that stash and collect those single skeins. And remember that when you're shopping for yarn, as soon as you wind it into a ball, it's technically stash, okay? So it barely exists in your stash if you wind it into a ball right away and knit it up into the Melting Marrow Blanket. So have fun and I'll see you in the next video.